Now that we have understood how to derive the wave equation for a string under tension, we will continue to understand a traveling wave on a string. As we have seen, the wave equation is a second order partial derivative equation, which means it has two solutions. A standing wave is represented by the first, a traveling wave is the second. But before we get into the answers and explore them in detail, let's first define what velocity means in the two solutions. The velocity at which the phase, that is the disturbance, moves throughout the string is the velocity of a traveling wave. Keep in mind that there is no horizontal displacement of any particles. Instead, each particle just oscillates up and down. For a standing wave, the velocity term can be thought of as the consequence of the superposition of two oppositely traveling waves. You can look at the velocity in terms of energy as well. The kinetic energy in a traveling wave embodies the transverse velocity term. We say that the energy is moving in that wave. In fact, traveling waves are employed to convey energy. We call this information. The total energy in standing wave merely oscillates as potential energy or remains constant transversally. A standing wave cannot have any longitudinal movement of energy. However, the total energy is a function of the amplitude squared in both cases, and this is non-negotiable. As described earlier, a standing wave is a superposition of two traveling waves moving in opposite directions at the same speed and amplitude. So let's have a look at an example that is both basic and elegant. I can write the nth mode of a standing wave on a string as the linear combination of n normal modes. Here omega n are the discrete frequencies at which these normal modes are obtained. A particular normal mode, say yn, can be broken down using the following trigonometric identity. Applying this to the nth normal mode, we get the following result. Despite the fact that we haven't explored the direction of traveling waves, you'll just have to take my word for it that what you see above is superposition of two oppositely traveling waves that result in a standing wave. I would like to point out one subtlety. In order to create a standing wave, the frequency of the two oppositely traveling waves must be the same. Although the amplitude isn't required, it does result in a more prominent wave. As a result of the prior discovery, the wave equation now makes perfect sense. You can enter any arbitrary function of position and time into the wave equation, which is really just a traveling wave and you'll notice that it fulfills the wave equation. And this is where the two solutions that we saw in the beginning overlap, and I just want you to take a moment to appreciate this. Later on I will show you how a standing wave is obtained in a light wave. This shouldn't come as a surprise to you, as we have already seen the wave equation for a 3D wave, and a light wave is essentially a 3D wave, where the only thing that's oscillating is the field. Okay, now we'll have this conversation in a future video. This was far more than the spoiler needed. Let's move on to analyzing traveling waves. Consider a traveling wave given by the following function, where lambda is the wavelength of this traveling wave. This equation essentially comes from the wave equation, but let us now see how this can translate into the wave equation itself. But like any physical system, we must first identify certain initial conditions before proceeding into our analysis. Take the transverse displacement at the string's ends to be zero. There is no actual displacement or movement of particles in the y direction at the endpoints. These are also referred to as nodes. Here you can see the normal modes in three dimensions on a membrane. I went with the 3D case because it is the most difficult to visualize. You can also lower them to 1D and 2D cases after seeing these 3D normal modes. Returning to our trial function from which we want to derive the wave equation, we get the following when we take the first partial derivative of the test function with respect to x. In addition, the partial derivative of displacement y with respect to time is given by the following. Why did I calculate partial derivatives or displacements in terms of time and position only. I would like to be completely honest here. If I take the derivative of any other quantity, its derivative is zero because they are all constants. The partial derivative of the displacement y with respect to time is plainly equal to the negative of the velocity times the partial derivative of y with respect to x. Similarly, if you take a traveling wave on another string that is moving in the negative x direction, you will get the same differential equation but without a minus sign. Now if we take the second partial derivative of the wave equation above, you will see that the wave equation that we had previously seen is exactly what we get. Here again, v is the velocity of the phase and not the particles moving transversely. Taking the first partial derivative of the travelling wave with respect to time gives us the transverse velocity of the particles oscillating about the mean position. Now here's another treat for you. Let me derive a direct relation between transverse velocity and phase velocity. Consider a solution to the wave equation of the form psi xt is equal to fx minus vt. If now I take the argument x minus vt equals to some constant say z, then the partial derivative of psi with respect to x will be the following. And the partial of psi with respect to time will be as follows. Because psi is no longer a function of x or t, I apply the chain rule to generate both derivatives. And finally, the second partial derivatives of the two above equations yield our wave equation. 
I'm going to combine the two waves that are traveling in different directions. You will notice that the result is a standing wave. The final expression for such a standing wave is given by the following equation. The normal modes for these equations, whatever we have seen so far, will be discussed and explored in the next episode, as well as how they can be utilized to do a Fourier analysis of any standing wave or traveling wave that is a solution to the wave equation that we have studied so far. Until then, have a great day, take care, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.